Before we begin, I wish to say that since recording this story, an alleged victim has come forward and their statement will be shared at the end of this video. As this is an ongoing story, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to tune in to my upcoming live streams where I will be sharing updates on this situation. Alleged fake bags, angry customers, deleted videos, and a mess in Melbourne. Let's get into it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Again, access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Dacob all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week. Come join us in the live chats. This is really juicy. Okay. Where to begin? Well, the news in Australia has been reporting, okay? News report in Australia on several channels and outlets. And they've been reporting about a certain um, luxury retailer that is known for selling reduced priced luxury goods, particularly focus on bags, okay? Uh, and this uh, shop is called Cosette. Uh, you can order from them online and they also have a real analog store with people working in there. You could also go into the store and purchase things. And Cosette is the name of this store. Now, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Everything's alleged, just my opinion, not rooted in any truths or facts, okay? Just to be very clear. And uh, the news in Australia have been reporting that quite a few customers that have purchased luxury bags from Cosette have subsequently after they have purchased these bags realized that they were sold non-authentic bags allegedly everything so Cosette is telling them you're purchasing from us authentic luxury bags the customers some of the customers allege that they have received non-authentic bags instead of authentic bags now the difference between of course non-authentic in most countries in the world it's illegal to sell non-authentic branded goods um but you see when you do it if you're honest about the luxury about said goods being not authentic then you charge way less but if you're going to sell non-authentic goods, but you're going to claim that they are authentic, well, then you're going to up the price. So that's where things become, they were already illegal, but they become even more bad because on top of selling counterfeit goods, you are also upping the price of said counterfeit goods, making it seem like they're not counterfeit, you know, so that you could profit even more off of it, making the situation even more iffy. Uh, if that is the case, these are all just allegations. Nobody is um, claiming that Cosette, you know, is selling fakes. Everybody's just alleging stuff. Speculation only. Now, the TV report is from A Current Affair. Now, A Current Affair has been doing their research for quite some time. And I'm like, A Current Affair, you're a little bit late to the game, honey. Because somebody already dropped a video on this topic months ago. You can check that out on my channel. The story is connected to Cosette and to a luxury YouTuber from America that bought a bag from them after seeing Mel and Melbourne's video. But we're going to get to all of that in the second part of this video. So stay tuned. Buckle up, get the popcorn, a little coffee. I got my coffee ready and let's get to it. Step by step, the chronological order of luxury shade. Dun, dun, dun. Now, this news reporter and this station reported and they said that uh, it was on television. And there's also transcripts of it. 
And they said that they've been researching for several months this story. So it's like they've been doing some investigative reporting, honey, okay? And they found several clients of Cosette that claim that they have been sold counterfeit luxury goods. The first one on my list is Erin from Melbourne. Erin, come, uh, come forth, darling. So this is Erin... Erin in Melbourne. I mean, at this point, there's a lot of in Melbourne. <laughs> Why don't you start a YouTube channel, Erin? We got another somebody in Melbourne. So Erin from Melbourne paid in Australian dollars, I believe, $1,541 uh, for a Gucci bag several years ago and was stoked to finally flaunt a real designer bag, as she says, because, you know, it's not like she has luxury goods all around. She was saving up for quite some time for this particular piece. She had that one piece. And she says, I looked at the dust bag. I think that was probably the main giveaway. It didn't say that it was made in Italy, which I know that a lot of the items do, says Erin, about the Gucci dust bags. Uh, I went to a third-party company who do authentications, Erin said. I eagerly awaited, and it came back that it was not authentic. This is the said Gucci bag that Erin photographed. Okay? That's the dust bag. We got the little card lid that comes with the bag. This is the bag. Um, she says, I eagerly awaited for the uh, authentication to come back. It came back that it wasn't authentic, that it was a counterfeit bag. So needless to say, I was devastated. Erin then contacted Cosette and sent the bag back. Cosette claimed still that uh, the bag was authentic. Cosette claims also that they use like third-party authenticators that authenticate their goods. And Cosette also claims that they despite the fact that this lady apparently had this bag for like two years almost, they still took the bag back, you know, out of goodwill. And they also said that this, the fact that they gave her the money back, even after such a long time, does not mean that they're admitting guilt at all. They just want their customers to be satisfied. But Cosette still states and claims that this bag is authentic. Uh, so they came back to me, says Erin, just over a week later with their own certificate of authenticity. So Cosette said, no, 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 this bag is authentic. And they said, it's 100% authentic, Erin said. Despite that, Cosette offered Erin a full refund, which she accepted. Now, the next story is from Milana. Hi, Milana. Want to show your pretty face? Hey girl, Milana, a style, a fashion stylist, uh, I think also from Australia, bought a designer bag from Cosette before and had no issues in the past, but said that this time when she purchased the bags, something, it just something felt off. It's like something did not feel right to her. She says there was an odor that was very odd. It kind of smelled like a factory smell. Milana said. And then she continues by saying, and so also on the bag, the main logo on the outside was crooked. And let me show you. This is the bag uh, in question, Milana's Prada bag. So Milana didn't bother getting the bag reauthenticated to find out whether her suspicions were correct. She just wanted a refund, which she received from Cosette. Now, uh, to me, if this is a photo of her bag, I would not say that this logo is crooked. But I would say that I think that it's attached um, a little bit too low. It's not really centered in the center of the leather plaque here. But the metal is attached a little bit lower. But I, and then again, I really don't care about Prada. Never did. So... I, I, I wouldn't know. Like, to me, even an authentic Prada looks fake, to be perfectly honest with you, because they look treacherous, no matter how they look like. But, oh, we call it a fufu smell, says Carla. Interesting. Now, I don't know why she would have two dust bags for one bag. 
two girls in a cup scenario. Oh, <laughs> but you know what I mean? So I don't quite understand why they would do this sort of, uh, the current of, uh, a current affair posted these two photos. Like if you're getting one bag, why are there two dust bags? Um, yeah, right? The, the, the dust bag designed before the latest dust bag, shoes, SLGs, and bags, right? But then again, Oh, I see. Caleb says Prada will do a dust bag for the bag and another dust bag for accessories like a lock or a clochette. But you're saying the dust bag is not the dust bag. Like the, the style of... Well, I also don't know how old this bag is in particular. Either way, she got her money back. Cosette still claims that the bag is authentic. But they want a satisfied customer, so they said, take your money back. The next story that A Current Affair shared uh, in this video reportage is Louise. Hello, Louise, darling. Okay, so this is Louise. Um, we'll go, we'll go. So Louise paid 2,415 Australian dollars and 40 cents, okay, for an Yves Saint Laurent bag from Cosette, YSL bag which arrived with a certificate of authenticity, she claims, from a reputable authenticator. Um, now, here's an interesting story because Louise claims this. She says that she had a look at the certificate that they had sent her, and she says, I actually noticed that the photos on the certificate sort of looked a bit different from my actual bag. Louise said. She continues, so I just thought, you you know what? I'm going to get myself my own certificate. A few hours later, Louise was told by the same authenticators that her bag was fake. So Louise, like others, received a full refund from Cosette. Now, also, the Sydney Morning Herald reported about Cosette and this entire instance so it's a hot topic right now. Several news casters, uh, news outlets are reporting about this. Now, obviously, not just news outlets, but also the biggest news outlets, which is us luxury content creators, including Jessie Style. Big shout out to my dear friend Jessie Style, who has a wonderful YouTube channel. She is in Melbourne, by the way. So she has also reported about this. Um, and I have also reported about this several months ago. We're going to get into all that juicy stuff in just a second. I just want to let you know that also the a current affair who did the video reportage, they went to Cosette. They too went to Cosette. Uh, you know, they, just, they, they entered, they filmed, and they entered. They kind of blurred out the faces of the workers there, and they asked... Here's the scene. This is the reporter. The cameraman is following the reporter. They entered Cosette, and they're asking these two ladies that are working at the desk there at the cash register. They're like, hey, y'all selling fakes? I mean, the reporter was like, bam. I, I don't know if this is an Australian way of doing it, but it was like, no hellos and goodbyes. It was like, you selling fakes? <laughs> and they're like, um, not that we know of, no. So they were confront the two ladies were confronted by the reporter who, in my humble opinion, did a terrible job. But anyway, we'll go, we'll go. That's just my opinion. So she was just like, we'll go, we'll go. Look at that Jacques Mousse little baglet. Look, look at Jacques Mousse over there. What is this, Bottega? Is this a Bottega here? Uh, the store conven is conveniently closed today due to employee illness. <laughs> <laughs> the shade. But so, anyway, the reporter was like, you know, are you selling fakes? And they're like, no, no, not that we know of. But um, very interesting point that they did state. They said, you know, sometimes there are issues. Like, for example, a client buys an Yves Saint Laurent bag from us, takes it to YSL, the boutique, you know, to inspect it, check it out, whatever. And then the YSL workers at the YSL boutique say, this doesn't look like one of our bags. This is fake. You bought it at Cosette? Oh, it's fake. So basically what I think the workers imply, like Cosette is given a bad rep. So the second you buy a bag from them, like let's say YSL, and you take it to YSL, and then you tell the YSL people, 
working at YSL. I got this bag at Cosette. It's like they're almost going to like immediately think that it's fake. So I think the Cosette employees were trying to kind of also defend their business and say like, hey, it's like at this point, like, no matter if the bag is authentic or not, the second you say it's from Cosette, people are going to think it's not authentic. Like, that's also not cool. Now, I'm not here giving any verdicts, just to be very clear. I'm not here saying that Cosette is selling fakes. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm doing is reporting what I've heard thus far. So I'm just sharing with you the information that I've gathered so far. And uh would be interesting to hear from you. What do you guys think is going on here uh, in, in this instance? But... You know, it's not just the news reporting about this. Other outlets and other people have also been uh, talking about Cosette several times, promoting them. Now we get to the juiciest part of the video, the chronology of shame. I have written down the chronological order in which I will talk to you with my dear friend Mel in the building. Mel in Melbourne, come here, sweetie. Hello, darling. You're not Mel in Melbourne now, sweetie. Now you're Mel in the fashion bunker. So, we'll go, we'll go. I will post the link to Mel's channel down below. Be sure to go check out Mel's channel and subscribe to this lovely lady. But let's get to the chronology of the shame. The Mel in Melbourne Cosette timeline, as I like to call it. Let's see what happens here. So I've done a little bit of investigative luxury YouTube reporting myself. And just before we get into it, thumb up this video if you're liking it and subscribe. But also, little note, quick note to whoever decides to post something on the internet, just a friendly reminder. Once you post something on the internet, no matter how hard you try to delete it later, it's forever going to remain on the internet. So let's begin the timeline. Let's go back to 2020. On my list here, I have May 13th, May 13th, 2020. This is the first Cosette paid partnership with Melon Melbourne. Double designer bag unboxing is the title of the video. So the actual full title of the video is double designer bag unboxing, Louis Vuitton and Celine bag with prices, Melon Melbourne. Coincidentally, that video as of now, as I'm filming, it's still online and I have the link to that video. So you can go check it out. I don't know how long it's going to stay there, but it's from May 13th, 2020. Now, then the scandal happens. Uh, Cosette gets called out for selling fake bags, allegedly. And there's an uproar online. And the uproar is so big to a point where Mel and Melbourne is forced to make an apology video for having had a sponsorship video with Cosette. So, May 30th, 2020, basically 17 days after she posted her first video, 17 days later, on May 30th, 2020, Mel makes an apology video entitled Addressing Everything. Now, in that video, Mel says that she got a fee from Cosette, plus a bag. The bag was deducted from the fee. She says YouTube is her business, so that's why she always charges a fee. <laughs> so basically she's saying, yeah, Cosette paid me 
to do a video. Uh, I'm this is my profession. You know, I do YouTube professionally. If you want me to talk about your business, I'm going to charge you. But they, you know, she also wanted a bag, and then they deducted the price of the bag from her fee. Makes sense. But you know, big apology. Woohoo! I, I guess it's like at the same time you can't really expect Mel to dive into the legitimacy of Cosette, at least back in 2020. I mean, I've had uh, several friends of mine from Australia telling me Cosette always had a weird reputation. So technically, if you have a big following on YouTube and you accept a sponsorship with another company, you might maybe want to do your homework a little bit better and figure out that if that company is really worth risking your reputation for or not. I'm putting it very mildly. But I wonder, why is the first sponsorship video still online if it was so controversial? Why is the first sponsorship video between Mel and Cosette from 2020 still online if it was so controversial? Why? Because let's fast forward to 2023 in this chronology. March 26th of 2023, Mel partnered with Cosette again and posted the video entitled v Vlog. Luxury shopping spree in Sydney, featuring YSL, Celine, Bottega, Dior, Prada, and Chanel at Cosette. This video, as of today, has been deleted. Only after the scandalous outing of everything on the news in Australia. Since the news broke about Cosette in 2023, Mel took the video down. It's no longer available on her channel. As of today. But it was available on March 26th when she uploaded it. Now, shortly after that, another YouTuber uh, watched that video and watched the sponsored video between Mel and Cosette, another YouTuber, luxury YouTuber, and decided to buy a bag from Cosette. Now, so just according to what Mel said in 2020 in her apology video, where she said, I'm, you know, professional YouTuber. If your business wants me to talk about it, you're going to pay me. I will charge a fee. So we deduct from that that we, so we think that Mel was also paid again by Cosette in 2023 to make her video about Cosette, right? I mean, according to her own words, why would she make a free video about Cosette all of a sudden in 2023? If she got paid to do one in 2020. So now we're in April, April 19th, 2023. Another lady comes to the public eye with her YouTube channel, and that would be Luxury and Life in the Middle. Hey, sweetie darling. Hey, how's it going, sweetie? So uh, this lovely lady's channel, I also posted down below, Luxury and Life in the Middle. This lady posted a video on April 19th entitled, I was scammed, sold a counterfeit bag, how I found out and what I'm doing to get my money back. That's the video I reacted to because she claims in her video that she watched Mel in Melbourne's video about Cosette. So she checked out Cosette. She found a Prada bag. She liked, I, th I think it was a Prada bag. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and she ordered the Prada bag. The Prada bag arrived. And when it arrived, she noticed that something was iffy about it. Then she got it kind of checked, you know, by another authenticator. And it turned out that the bag was not authentic. 
So then she made a video about that. Now in the video, she's very, very nice, you guys, very polite. She does not come after Mel at all. She says, hey, it's not Mel's fault. Mel couldn't know. You know what I mean? Like she's very, very polite and not attacking anybody, just to be very clear, okay? Um, and, but I, I see this video and then of course I step in, then I make a video on April 24th. So she released her video on April 19th. On April 24th, I do my video uh, about the situation so far. Now, we're going to get to the chronology of, about all of this, but listen, so after I did my video and I added luxury and life in the middle, like I always do, I always credit everybody properly. So under the video, I added the lady, posted a link to her video. So she, she got notified that somebody made a video about her. She then came to my channel. She watched my video reaction to her video. And she left a public comment under my video. This is the comment that luxury and life in the middle left under my video. It's still publicly visible on my channel. I'll read it to you. Thank you for discussing the topic and my video, Jacob. Just a little clarification for your viewers who didn't watch my video. First, the company is not a consignment or pre-loved. They sell brand new bags at a discount. Second, I have a, describe, uh, I have a subscriber who bought the exact same bag. They authenticated theirs after seeing my video and theirs was deemed counterfeit as well. But listen to this, you guys. Most troubling was that the authenticity certificate sent with both of our bags were identical down to the unique code. What she's saying here is that the other person that also bought from Cosette the same bag, they both got the same certificate of authenticity down to the same unique code. She's alleging this in her comment. She continues, I have a second subscriber who is getting her bag authenticated as well. Anyway, as you mentioned, I don't blame Mel. My video was a PSA and cautionary tale to always get your items authenticated. I will be doing a follow-up to the video regarding how it was handled and sharing my other subscribers' situation. Thanks for all you do for the community. Well, thank you to Luxury and Life in the Middle now, you see, here is where things get a little bit messy. Why? Well, because I was eagerly awaiting this lovely lady's update video on the situation. I was hoping she might update me on the situation. And yet something else happened instead. Well. Instead of making an update video on her other subscribers' authentication of the bag, she not only made no update video, but she also deleted her first video, the one that I reacted to. Gone. And I couldn't help but wonder, why would she delete her video. Did Cosette offer her some money to take the video down? Did they threaten her? Did somebody threaten her? Did she just feel uncomfortable with it? She just doesn't want any stress. Got her money back from Cosette and said, you know what? I, I don't want to do drama. Let me just... What, what was it? What was it? We never got an update. We never got an update. Isn't that bizarre? 
Isn't that bizarre? And now, furthermore, it looks like this never happened. If it wasn't for me. Had I not made my reaction video to this lady's video back in April, all traces of her video would be gone. Mel's video is gone. It's like clean. Everything is cleaned up. It's like nothing ever happened. But something did happen, didn't it? So what happened? And why are these videos disappearing? Isn't it a little bit strange? Mel in Melbourne, darling, care to make another video? Since you are all for transparency, you're all about transparency, you're telling that you're earning money from the sponsored videos, you're telling the prices of the bags you purchase, you're all for transparency, Mel. Care to make another video to clear up this situation? I mean, I'm just, you know, kind of being mathematical here, and I'm not the best at math, but one plus one is two. If somebody tells me they're all about transparency, but then they start taking videos down instead of addressing a situation, then I'm like, well, that's not very transparent after all, is it? And also, luxury and life in the middle. Care to make another video since you're also all up for transparency? We're waiting. Because at the end of the day, you see, on our side, all of my viewers and, and myself, for the most part, we're consumers. We're not businesses. I don't own a, a consignment store. I don't own a luxury bag shop. I don't own a vintage business store. I don't. So it's not like I'm here competition with Cosette. I'm just a consumer, a very concerned consumer. And personally, my point is this. If Luxury Life in the Middle and Mel in Melbourne are also both of them claiming that they are consumers, then aren't we all on the same side? Aren't consumers supposed to team up and build a strong bond and help each other out? And yet some consumers are deleting their videos. So who are we supposed to trust? Because when you're watching our videos, you're expecting some form of integrity. I mean, if somebody in their video, especially people who have a huge following, tell you, hey, I bought this product here. It's amazing. I recommend it to you. And they say, you know, sponsored, by the way, by this company, but even though this company is sponsoring me, I still love their products. Like, you would think as a consumer, as a fellow consumer, you could trust another fellow consumer. We're all in the same boat, right? But my question is this, who can we trust anymore? Can we trust anybody anymore who does any form of sponsorships? Like, I, and I don't get it, Mel. Seriously, all shade aside here, like, you get paid to advertise Cosette years ago, back in 2020. You get backlash for it back in 2020. You make an apology video. And then allegedly, years later, in 2023, you accept money from them again, allegedly, to partner with them again? What gives, girl? And how, how, how are we fellow consumers, you're also your fellow colleagues, how are we supposed to trust you? H how? Please let me trust you. Like, please, let me know how. Show me the way. Show, the, show me the light. I really, I want to know. Thank you, sweet. You're very kind. Thank you. All right. Uh, so... That's the chronology of shame, luxury, luxury shame, allegedly. And listen, I, I wish Mel really all the best. I wish Cosette all the best. Uh, I wish uh, luxury life in the middle all the best. Like, seriously, we're all struggling to survive here. This is not... But I, on a, I have also my viewers. I respect my viewers. 
I respect all the people that join me in my live streams, on my channel, that watch my content. And I don't let stuff like this pass. Be why? Because, exactly because of the reason that I see them people posting videos on YouTube after they've seen a video like, you know, somebody, I did a sponsorship with this brand or that brand, and then somebody falls for it, you know, buys the stuff, gets duped somehow, and then makes a video saying, oh my gosh, I got tricked into doing this or that, and I got a non-authentic product, this or that. I then report about this. Why? Because I want us, on our end, us consumers, I want us to team up and be safe. I want us to be happy. Our hard-earned money, when we spend it on something, I want us to be safe, knowing that when we spend the money on some product that we love, that we know that we're getting good service. So you best believe if there's something iffy out there, I'm going to sound the alarm. Why? Not because I'm cloud chasing and I want more views. Absolutely not. It's because I care for my viewers and I don't want people to get duped. I don't want people to get tricked. I don't want people to spend their hard-earned money on stuff that turns out to be counterfeit dupes or worst case scenario, not even sent out to them because the company just disappears. Up. You know what I mean? This is just speculating about other companies and other brands, whatever. But you know what I mean? There's enough fraudulent crap out there, you guys. There's enough of that happening, and there's more and more every day. So at least we who know each other, and especially us who have a presence on social media, it's not like the luxury community is this like huge community. We're just a handful of people, really, doing the same stuff over and over again. I mean, let's be honest here. At least we can have some form of integrity. And bottom line, it's not like you needed the money desperately so that you sold your soul to promote some shady brand. You know, you need to put food on the table. You got kids to feed. There's trouble paying, you know, rent, insurance, mortgage, whatever. Still morally ugh, terrible, but like you do what you got to do to survive. Okay? But if you don't need to survive and you still decide to do shady stuff, to accept shady money, well, that's a whole other level. That's a whole other level of, to put it mildly, morally doubtful behavior. What do you guys think? You know, this is just my opinion, obviously. Um, everything's alleged, obviously. I'm just worried, okay? And um, I'm allowed to be worried, you know? I'm worried because now every time, you know, I get paranoid. Every time I watch some other luxury content creator making a video in which they're sponsored by some brand or something, I, I go, ah! I don't know. Should I trust? You know what I mean? Um, it's because like you get hurt and then you get less and less tr trusting with, with every time you get hurt anew, you go back into it with, with more fear that you might get scammed somehow. Uh, and I really, I don't want to live that way. I, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person that, that sees, you know, uh, that sees a scammer behind every wisteria. I don't want to be that person, but like I'm turning into that person because like, it's like everywhere I turned, somebody's trying to, you know, rip one in, in the wrong way. And I, I don't want that. Um, Alaya Mac says in the chats, I question the moral compass of some of these YouTubers especially after the first fiasco. Well, KS says, lodging a police report in Australia should do the trick. There's too many scammers lurking uh, around. <sighs> do what you got to do, but just be safe. And take 
this last tip for me as kind of a very basic standard. You know how expensive these bags are, okay? We're talking about the luxury authentic bags. You know how expensive they are. And I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times before that you don't even care about it. But there is a lot of truth in what I'm about to say. You know how expensive these bags are. If you see somebody selling you these bags as brand new for like a much lower price, it's probably too good to be true. Always bear that in mind. Now, having said that, let me open up a slight little door into another conversation that we can have in another video. But we've, we've been talking about this a couple of weeks ago on my channel about the gray market and finding bags like Prada or Gucci at Costco. Um, and there's been this whole conversation on my channel about the gray market, uh, meaning products that these luxury brands produce that are either subpar, don't pass quality control, or they're produced subpar on purpose to be sold in their outlets, which is a whole other marketing strategy of these brands to earn more money, uh, basically. And yes, oftentimes these gray market products are subpar, at meaning that uh, they might not pass through authentication. Because let's be very clear about this. Just like I don't trust a lot of these stores, I also don't trust authenticators. Never. I'm sorry. I just don't. Okay? I do not trust authenticators. I don't. So you're never going to have 100% certainty, no matter who authenticates the bag. But on top of that, a lot of these authenticators are not specialized in the quality of authenticating of gray market bags. So they might be versed in the authentication process of the top-notch boutique bags. But if the gray market bags also produced by the brands, which are also authentic, but if these gray market bags have cheaper threads used to stitch the bag, uh, cheaper leathers used to stitch the logo inside the bag. Of course, they're not going to pass authentication if the authenticator has no clue about the gray market. You see? So maybe Cosette's bags are from the gray market, the gray market. Allegedly, question mark, possible. And if that's the case, maybe certain authenticators don't know about it. And they're going to say, well, the bag is fake. Well, are we sure? And of course, fighting counterfeit is becoming like plucking white hair. You know what they say, you pluck one, three, come to its funeral. It's like you can't get rid of it. And I do wonder if these luxury brands want a piece of the cake of the fake market as well. Big players. Well, there are big corporations that can hide assets easily. You know, they can have a company of a company, subsidiary company, working for a company, uh, hired as an external company, so they're not implicated legally. So what I'm trying to say here, who's to say that these major luxury players allegedly don't own stakes in factories and manufacturers of fake goods. I've talked about this a year ago on my channel already, but think about it. Why would any one of these brands want to miss out on that portion of the cake? And you know, like they always say, if you can't beat them, join them. So who's to say that the replica market isn't in part also owned and run by those same corporations that are fighting counterfeits. But that's a story for another day. If you're interested in that story, let me know down below. And of course, I'm interested personally to know your thoughts on this particular topic. You know, let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thumb up this video. Let's get this video rolling. We need to raise awareness about safety of the consumer. 
And uh, these major brands, they might also license their brand name to an outlet factory to make authentic, cheaper, lower quality goods. This is nothing new, by the way. This is nothing new. You know who started this trend in the 60s? Oh, here's some information for all the TikToker wannabes who have no freaking clue about uh, fashion history, but keep making videos on TikTok about it. And here's a little bit of a tidbit information for you. The first gentleman to ever license a brand, and he got a ton of slack for doing so. The fashion industry was snobbing him, but the joke was on them because that made him a multimillionaire. Pierre Cardin. Pierre Cardin licensed his name already back in the 60s to China. Not only did he license his name to other countries, he licensed his name to everything. Did you guys know that there are sardines with a Pierre Cardin name on them? You can buy Pierre Cardin sardines. Did you know that there's also a Pierre Cardin bank? He was the mastermind behind licensing products like that. Licensing the brand to other products that are not even connected to his fashion. This is coincidentally also why we still see today Pierre Cardin underwear that has nothing to do with Pierre Cardin, the, the fashion designer, but he licensed the logo to underwear. So fascinating, isn't it? So who's to say that this business strategy, which was already in the 60s happening and the 70s, who's to say it's still not happening today, but in a much more subtle and subterfugious way? Think about it. All you got to do is wake up, smell the coffee. Love you loads. Let me know your thoughts down below. Until next time, subscribe. Thumb up the video. After recording this video, the YouTuber Luxury and Life in the Middle asked me to share with you the following statement from her. The statement goes as follows. Jacob, as mentioned by another commenter, I was threatened with legal action, which is why the video was deleted. I was refunded for my bag, as was my subscriber. As for an update video, I did not feel comfortable making an update video after the threatened legal action. If someone asks me what happened, I do answer their question. Would hope that when you release this portion of the live stream as a separate video, that you add a clarifying statement about why it was deleted. I absolutely did not receive any form of compensation to delete the video. This is where the quote and message by Luxury and Life in the Middle ends. Thank you and stay tuned for the continuation of this story.